How do you learn math extremely fast? And when I mean extremely fast, I mean faster than you normally would. A lot of people say there are no shortcuts to hard work and practice and time. And I'm one of those people, I do agree, math takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and if you think about it, there's people that do math for a living. They do it every day, and they still don't know everything. So why is there some magical shortcut? Well, there's not. I'm here to tell you there's not. But there are things that you can do that will make your journey much easier. Tip number one, time your sessions. So I like to time all of my study sessions, and it's something I started doing fairly recently, and I feel like it makes a big difference. So you can use your phone as a timer or your computer, but the problem with that is that you'll tend to be distracted. I know if my phone is on and I'm getting text messages or notifications, I will pick it up and I will reply or I'll heart it or I'll text back. I'm very, very easily distracted. So if you're like me and you're easily distracted, what you can do is get a timer. So this is one that I have right here. It's called the Time Timer. And I'll try to leave a link in the description to this one or one like it if I can find one that's a little bit less expensive. This one's simple. It has a maximum of 60 minutes. You set the timer and then you walk away. It's got a silent option and an option that makes a sound. So if I just do that, <laughs> 60 minutes, right? I cannot emphasize how useful it is to time your sessions, okay? It just makes a huge difference. When you know there's a timer, it's kind of like you know that you're in like focus mode. This is the time I have today out of my day to work on mathematics. And by just setting it for an hour a day, that's huge. Try it. Go study for one hour, set a timer, and I promise you after that hour, you are gonna learn so much more than before you started. You were just gonna learn so much more. And there's something about having that timer, at least for me, that makes a huge difference. Tip number two, make it a daily habit. And this one honestly is easier said than done. It's very easy for me to sit here and tell you to make studying every day a daily habit. Doing it is something else. And that's why I think having the timer really, really helps. Maybe you wake up one day and you're not sure if you want to study. You're just not feeling it. By telling yourself that you're only going to study for one hour and by timing your session, it will help you create that daily habit. So you want to make it a daily habit. If you study every day, even for just 60 minutes a day, it's going to make a difference. You're going to learn a lot of mathematics. Tip number three, try to do at least a certain number of problems every day. Now, this number is going to vary greatly depending on what you're studying. For example, if you're studying algebra or calculus, a very reasonable number would be somewhere between five and 10 problems. Five is actually pretty easy. 10, depending on how difficult the questions are, might take you a little bit longer. But try not to set the bar too high. That's something that I'm actually guilty of doing. For example, when I was trying to learn to write proofs, I would set a goal of 20 proofs a day, which was really, unattainable at that level. You know, I was just learning to write proofs. Uh, there's no way I could do 20. I was lucky if I could do five. So try to be really realistic in your goals so that you can actually accomplish your goals and see how it goes. Remember, math is a lifelong journey. You have your entire life to learn math. So even though this video is about learning math extremely fast, try to have fun while you're doing it too. And I think by setting the bar a little bit lower in terms of how many problems you actually try to do every day, it lets you accomplish your goals, it lets you defeat those problems, and it makes you feel accomplished. And you're more likely to do it the next day because you accomplished your goal that day. So I think a good number for maybe algebra or calculus would be five at a minimum, maybe 10 if you're feeling motivated. And if you really wanna go nuts and you wanna set like a really crazy goal, maybe do 20 or 30, but chances are you won't be able to keep that up as a daily habit. So keep that in mind when you're trying to decide how many problems you want to do every day. It really helps though. It really, really helps to have a set number of problems that you want to do every day. And of course, 
if you're doing higher level math, let's say you're studying functional analysis or you know, graduate level real analysis. In that case, maybe doing you know, 10, 15 proofs a day is a little bit much. So try to keep that in mind. Tip number four, this one is really important and I think a lot of people don't even realize it. You wanna make sure you're comfortable. You wanna make sure that your study space is good. Make sure you have enough room to work on math. Make sure you have a good pencil. You have the paper that you want to use. If you don't like notebooks, then don't use notebooks. If you prefer loose leaf paper, use loose leaf paper. If you prefer pen over pencil, use a pen. Do whatever it takes to make your environment comfortable. One of the things that I used to do when I was in graduate school was order pizza. <laughs> so I would get together with my friend, he'd come over and we'd order pizza and we'd eat pizza and do math. And it kind of made it a little bit fun, especially having him there, right? Working with someone else makes a big difference. So make your environment comfortable, find a suitable place where you can study, make sure it's quiet, just make sure you feel good and you're able to focus on the mathematics. The fifth tip I think is the most important one. And it's to take a break if you need one. And this is not one that people really talk about because people think if I take a break, I'm not really doing any math. So how is that helping me get better at math? It gives your mind a break, right? You need that mental break. I always think about exercise programs like lifting weights. People who lift weights, they usually follow some type of routine. And that routine incorporates rest days. and they always say, you know, those rest days, that's when you grow, right? That's when your muscles get bigger is during those rest days. That's what people say, right? You, you tear down the muscle during the workout and then, and then you rest and that's when your muscles grow. I kind of think it's somewhat similar in mathematics, but it's a little bit different, right? You spend some time doing some math and the next day you might need a break. So even though I talked about how it's really important to make it a daily habit and to do at least a certain number of problems every day, sometimes you're going to reach a point where you need a break. You'll notice I recommended 60 minutes earlier in this video. That's so that you don't burn out. So if you overdo it and you end up studying three to four hours a day for several days in a row, what's going to happen is you're going to have a mental burnout. You're going to need a break. In weightlifting, they call that overtraining. You can actually overtrain your brain and you get to the point where you wake up in the morning and you know, oh, I have to do math today and you just don't want to do it. You just need a vacation. And I'm here to tell you it's okay. I think it's important and I think it's healthy to take those types of vacations, those types of mental breaks. So by keeping your goals realistic and maybe just doing again, five, 10, 15 problems a day for maybe an hour or so a day and then try to be consistent. I think you'll learn a lot of math. And if you're feeling like you're doing too much, take a step back, right? Remember, it's okay to take a break. In fact, I think it will help you because you'll come back after that break and you'll be rejuvenated and you'll be ready to go again. Remember, mathematics is not something that you can rush. You do need practice, you do need time, and it takes a lot of effort. But hopefully after watching this video, you've learned some tips that you can incorporate that will help you get better at math extremely fast. Again, to recap, you want to get a timer. I'll try to leave a link in the description. Get a timer that you can use that's simple, that's not your phone, that's not your computer, and start with maybe an hour a day. The next thing you want to do is try to make it a daily habit, but at the same time, you don't want to overdo it. Don't plan to spend five hours a day studying mathematics. You can do that, and sometimes it's necessary depending on what you're studying. I mean, you might be in grad school. In that case, that's a whole different story, right? <laughs> so that's a whole different video if you're in grad school. But for most people who are taking a calculus class or an algebra class or a differential equations class or linear algebra, discrete math, these tips should help you. Also, you want to set a goal for how many problems you do, right? So that really, really helps. That way you don't spend your whole time reading, right? You actually want to do some math problems because you'll learn math by doing actual math problems. Reading helps too, and that's a whole nother thing, but doing the math problems really helps you get better very, very quickly. And you also want to make sure that you don't overdo it. And if you overdo it, don't forget to take a break. And of course, make sure you have a really, really comfortable 
workspace. Make sure you're working somewhere that is quiet and comfortable and you feel like you can learn. You feel like you can sit down and there's no distractions. It's just you and the math book or you and the video. Whatever resources you decide to use, work. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck. Go do some math.